Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. Well, that's a happy little gospel, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so happy Advent. Um, I've been trying to warn myself and all of us that it was coming, but boom, here, it's here. It's here. Um, so Advent is broken up into four different weeks, as we know, and each week has its color and it's kind of its theme. And um, this first week is really apocalyptic. Um, and so your reading um, from our gospel today is very, very apocalyptic. Um, this kind of end times and, oh, all these things are coming to pass. Um, and it goes something like this. Like, people want to know, because being a Christian gets you picked on. And these people want to know, when, is the, when are we going to be right? And when are you going to come down here and let everybody know that we were right, blow them all up, tell them I was right, they were rude and they were wrong? When is the end coming so that we can all just win? That's what they want to know. And Jesus again and again is just like, chill out. You don't need to know that. That's not your job to know that. Um, it will be what it will be, and it will be when it's supposed to be. And you know what? Even I don't know. But just chill out. The thing is, you and I are obsessed with endings. And I had a sermon a, a couple weeks ago, I think, where I talked about I love to read the end of the book. Um, we love the ending. We want to know that we were right, right? So they... Right, right? Okay, don't worry. It's, it's English. English is weird. Um, so they, they want to know what's going to happen, and they want to know what the ending is going to be like, and they want to know that they're going to win, and they'll be right. And Jesus is saying to them, no, you don't need to know that because that's not the point. The end will come, and here's the deal. The end, and this is what's really, really important about Advent, the end is the beginning. That's really, really important because you and I, as Western, um, Western white European kind of folk, we think in a linear way, right? When you think of history, it's on a line, right? When you're taught history, it's on a line. We start here, then this happens, and this happens. And when we think of our own lives, we do the same thing, right? You're born, you're, you go to school, you graduate school, you get a job, then you get married, and then you have kids. And it's a line, and then you die. It's a line. Birth, death, boom. That's it. Right? That's how we think. And everything is that way. Our history is that way. Literature is that way. Right? We read the book. We start it. We end it. Nothing is more, more, more annoying than cliffhangers. We can't stand it. Is there a sequel? So everything for us, science is this way. We know this, and then we learn this, and then we know this. Here's the deal. It isn't. We are wrong. Things are cyclical. There is no beginning and no end. And I love this, and I think it's from Seneca, I think. I don't know. You guys know my history and my ability to remember quotes. But... Every new beginning is some other beginning's end. It is not this to this. It is this to this to this. Our lives are cyclical. That's why the church year is cyclical. So happy new year, by the way. Um, Advent is when we start our new year. Um, and you'll notice that it is not this to this, but we just keep coming. So Advent is not the beginning of the end can also be the end of the beginning. So we just keep going around and around and around. And that's really, really hard for us to wrap our minds around. And frankly, it's really, really hard for the disciples because they want this, and then they want to know that this is going to happen. That's not how it works. I want us to reframe things. I want us to stop worrying so much and being so afraid of endings. Anyone else do this when you're reading? I can't, st like, I'm working so hard to get through this book. I love this book. Reading it, reading it, reading it. And then I get to the last chapter, and I'm like, well, dang it. I don't want to finish it. I'm working so hard to get through this book, right? And then I'm upset that I'm going to finish it. 
I'm worried about the end. I don't like the ends. You and I are afraid of ends. We're afraid of change. We're afraid of something ending or being different. What if we looked at things differently? What if we looked at things not as a line, but as new beginnings? Would it be less scary? And that's what Jesus is trying to say to them. You know what? You don't need to be afraid of stuff. Because when this happens, it's a new beginning. When you're afraid, there's a new beginning. When there's a death, there's a new beginning. Here's an interesting little factoid. Did you know that babies don't want to be born? We always joke about like, well, they'll come when they want to come. They don't want to come. It's literally the, mo- the mother's body that ejects them. Now, if you're me, you eject your kids a little bit earlier than some people, but I have no patience. So I'm like, you got to go. Um, those of you who know how early my children were born get that joke. Okay, but the reality is babies don't want to be born. Why would you? I mean, have you seen the world that we live in? Whoever has a woman, like, I crawl back into a uterus right now if you let me. I mean, we like wrap ourselves in a blanket in a little fetal position. That's us trying to go back, right? So babies don't want to be born. You and I don't want to change. You and I, our fear of death is literally the same thing. But here's what I want you to think about. It is not until a baby goes through the pain and the chaos and the intensity of birth that real beginning begins, right? You and I cannot be who we are called to be unless we go through the pain and the chaos of change and rebirth. And it, sorry, it, it's miserable. Nobody wants to do that. You think a baby wants to go through a birth canal? Heck no. Heck no. They're all like warm and cozy in there and they get fed automatically. They're on like a drip feed. It's fantastic. Why would you want to change that? Nobody wants to change that. Nobody wants new beginnings. And we're all afraid that every new beginning is an end of some sort because you want to know what it is. It is. Advent is the end of our previous year. And it is the beginning of a brand new year. And the church goes to the same thing. We are so afraid of our loss and our change, aren't we? Do you ever, and I do this, I'm so guilty of this, so I'm just going to be honest and vulnerable with you. You go past the pictures of, like, who used to go to church, and you're like, whoa, I haven't seen that one in a while. They died. Oh, my gosh, the church has changed. And what do we do? We go with the loss. Oh, my gosh, we've lost things. We've lost things. Have, would you do a quick look around? How many of these faces aren't in those pictures? Is it loss or is it new birth? Is the baby dying or is the baby being born? Is the church dying or is it being reborn? Are you and I in our everyday lives? Are we dying or are we being reborn? And it's really asking ourselves those questions that's really, really important. Is the change the bad thing? Is, we're so worried about loss, aren't we? We're so worried about loss. That's all we can look back. All we do is look back. What did we have? Where were we? What was comfortable? What worked? Instead of looking forward about where is God calling us to? So I ask you, I ask you to ask yourselves very prayerfully this happened because this is what Advent's really about. Advent is really about looking inside and saying, what do I need to let go of to be who I need to be? We all have stuff that we need to let go of. As a church, as individuals, as a nation, as a people, humans in general. As families, we have things that we've been clinging to because we're afraid that they're dying. But what if they're just changing? And if what if our clinging to the past has been killing our future. What are we not willing to let go of to be reborn? And that's what I ask us today. And that's what Jesus is saying to you. Calm down. It's okay. You're so worried about wars and famines and all this stuff and about the good old days. You're worried about the good old days. What do we got to do to bring the good old days back? Can I just tell you, the good old days weren't really that good. But they were comfortable and they were known. 
we are called to go into the uncomfortable and the unknown because that's where God calls us to be. So let go and clean up this Advent. We're going to let go of some things. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.